This is gonna be interesting. Hi, hello, I'm Abby McInerney and I'm from Austin, Texas. There are so many things a person who is interested in science could become, much less speak to a group of people about. I could spend my 10 minutes talking about histology, which is the study of micros the microscopic structure of animal and plant tissues, or gelatology, which is the study of laughter, or maybe even agronomy, which is the study of soil management and crop production. <laughs> but to me, not to offend the people working in these earth-shattering careers, <laughs> but that would be a kind of boring 10-minute presentation. I could just tell you all about me for 10 minutes, and while I would find that interesting, I highly <laughs> doubt any of you would. <laughs> so instead, I'm going to talk to you about the wonderful species we are slowly but surely eradicating, what we can do about it, and why I care such an awful lot, and how CSG helped me with fully discovering this passion of mine. Plus, I've got pictures. <laughs> <laughs> to start, what is an endangered species, and what classifies a species as endangered? According to the Endangered Species Act of 1973, an endangered species is any species which is in danger of extinction throughout all or significant portion of its range. The law goes on to list criteria that can be used to define those species endangered or threatened with extinction. A species can be listed if its habitat is being destroyed, if populations are declining due to commercial purposes or otherwise, if it's facing elevated levels of disease or predation, if conservation law is ineffective in halting its decline, or if any natural or man-made factors affect its continued presence on our planet. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that y'all have, in fact, heard of a couple endangered species, like maybe the panda, the black rhino, the sea turtle, or the tiger, just to name a few. But how many of you, other than my family, have heard of some species like the golden-cheeked warbler, or the Barton Springs salamander, or the black-capped vireo? I didn't think many of you would have, and you have no reason to. As far as I'm concerned, they do not make it up here to the Northeast. <laughs> However, if you live in the Austin area, you would know that these species are not only endangered, but found almost exclusively in the counties around Austin, due to the fact that they thrive in the environments common. The golden cheeked warbler, for instance, likes to live in an environment of juniper and cedar trees, and that also has low shrubs. This is very common throughout the Texas Hill Country. The salamander itself is only found in one spring throughout the entire world. The point is that if it wasn't for the endangered species listing, these species would have almost definitely gone extinct. Now that you've been enlightened on the existence of the golden cheeked warblers and black capped vireos, I'm going to tell you how they influenced me. Let me take you back to when I was little. Every Thursday, I would go over to my grandparents' house for a grandma day. Those Thursdays were my time with my grandparents and nobody else's. And to this day, they still are. To get to my grandparents' house, you'd have to go drive down this twisty, heavy two-lane road through the Texas Hill Country. This is the road in question, in case you were wondering. <laughs> uh, River Hills Road, which is what it's called, is framed on both sides by hills and hills of ash and juniper trees. Remember the trees. They kind of come important later. <laughs> a couple of years back, this huge 70-acre plot on the side of the road was put up for sale. It was quickly bought up by the Eanes School District, who decided it would be an absolutely stupendous idea to build a sports complex. We were talking four multi-use fields, eight baseball fields, and stadium lights to top it off. And if they had room, they were going to build an elementary school too. <laughs> they were planning on totally developing this gloriously untouched piece of land. Oh, and did I mention the only, the only way to reach this plot was by River Hills Road? So, the two-lane, windy road. Genius idea, guys. What they were proposing would not only make it nearly impossible to get to my grandparents' house on the weekends or during school drop-off and pick-up times, but get rid of critical environments for the golden-cheeked warblers and black-capped vireos. Along with really ticking me off, the school district also angered a lot of elderly people with way too much time on their hands. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else better to do. <laughs> yeah. To this day, I really don't understand how they thought their plan would go off without a hitch. Growing up, I had always known that any development could be stopped by the finding of an endangered creature. So anyways, I figured if I really wanted to save this land, the only way to do it would be trespassing. 
<laughs> well, for the record, the private property sign was posted after I planned to go looking for the birds, but yeah, technically, I was a seventh grader gone rogue. <laughs> <laughs> I dragged my grandparents on this great adventure hike through all of the juniper and cedar trees, and guess how many birds I saw? None. But, for the record, a biologist had gone to the site years before and found some of the birds. Unfortunately, I didn't learn about this until a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Even with all of the discouraging signs from the hike, I did not let it deter me. Instead, I spent almost all of my time on the Texas Parks and Wildlife sign site, finding articles and reading up on the specific protection plans and emailing them to my grandparents to be passed along to the people in charge of the Westlake Neighborhood Alliance. This entire thing was happening while the district was trying to get permits, and thankfully, they were declined by the city. Last month, in study hall, while I was studying, I was on the local newspaper's website, being bored and all that, when I stumbled upon an article that got me really excited. The title was, Eans, Sell Land, Give Lease. Pretty cool, right? They finally gave up. That's what I had thought, until I read a little bit more of it. Now it's just some other people trying to develop it for sports. Sounds like that article I found, proving that there were birds in the area, might come in handy when I get home. Anyways, while at CSG, I realized that I can influence cases like this. Carrie, the marine science teacher, worked at NOAA for a year as a marine policy fellow, which meant that she was helping list endangered species. In the future, I think I would enjoy having a job like that, or maybe doing what the scientist who found the species does. Compared to time in the lab, looking at microorganisms, and time outside hunting for crabs, I prefer being in the field a lot more. <laughs> this narrows down what was a wide and scary world of science to a much more manageable size, making choices of what I want to do with my life significantly easier. Without CSG, I would not have figured out that I prefer spending time out in the field, and even more, I found out that jobs like Carrie's old one do exist. Thinking back on the semester, I've learned so many things. I've learned how to be a part of a tight-knit community. I've learned how to raise my voice. And I've also learned how to stand up for what I believe in. Now I know that when I go home, I will not be afraid to stand up for those who do not have a voice, from the smallest creature to the largest. If they are in danger, watch that world. I am, well, now a junior gone rogue. <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank everyone who made my CSG experience the most amazing one I could have asked for. Thanks to the RAs, the teachers, the staff, Gail for putting up with my eating habits, I'll grow out of them someday, and my parents for letting me go on this grand adventure. But most importantly, I'd like to thank all of my sisters. Without every single one of them, I would not even be a fraction of the person you see standing before you. Thank you all for putting up with my messy hair, my rain aversive energy, my occasional tardiness doing the getting lost in books, and most of all, thanks for being y'all.